that one i want to quickly talk about this because of course this interests me more so but i also want to ask you guys in the fucking chat right what do you think this is about so as you guys know i am you know a fan of no jumper and the no jumper universe and all the things that go on there and one of the characters in there called house phone is known for being a bit of a scammer why do I say a scammer? He basically does this thing where he will maybe sell some of his old gear, old Supreme stuff, um, or maybe he'll sell some, you know, some samples of his shoes that he makes called, um, what are they called? Uh, rolling something. I forgot the fucking name of it, but essentially it's an Air Force One with dice on it. He'll sell some samples of those on his Instagram stories. And it's a thing. I didn't know this is a thing, but this is a thing. It, I think it exists more in a kind of influencer, clouty submarket where people that have verified profiles will maybe sell um a spot on their story so the idea behind it is that you send them some money and then they will basically promote your product or service on their instagram story it's a bit of a weird industry because in general if i say i'm going to put something on your on my story and i take your hundred dollars there's no contract we have of course that like you sent me the money but there's no obligation for me to post it i can just run off with your money so it's a very risky business to be involved in, in the first place but obviously you're, you're hoping that the person is well known is going to be able to follow through and not be a scam artist well that's where house phone comes in he's known to do that he's known to sell these spots on these instagram stories but then not follow through it's one thing not to follow through if you're going to sell somebody a pair of shoes because maybe your you know life can get the best of you you get too busy you forget to send them on the day you meant to send them and then two days becomes a week a week becomes two weeks i get that even though it's fucking bizarre and i wouldn't stand for it and i'll be filing a fucking i'll be going to my bank and going crazy i understand that but not being willing or able to just post something on your instagram story sometimes just taking a picture or reposting something adding your own text is insane when somebody sent you 125 dollars. so in this case this is a courtesy of the of the no jumper reddit i want to hear from you guys who do you blame in this in this scenario this is a post from there it says house phone robbing me for 125 dollars for story sale do you blame the customer or do you blame house phone who do you blame me because i think the blame should be on equal parts i think if you're a fan of no jumper and you know who house phone is at this point if you let him scam you it's on you a little bit it's on you but if you're house phone i think you're a piece of shit for also scamming your fans and being lazy to not just post a fucking story so this is the screenshot it says the following um this guy gets into house phones dms via his stories he says he's a huge fan and asks him hey how much is it for me to promote my shit on your instagram story house phone says 125 dollars is the lowest i'll go sir he replies back and says okay how do i pay will you sign them for me um, oh no this is not this is not story i think this is a story but also this might be a shoe so maybe it's a product who knows will you sign them for me 125 is cool um house phone says yeah i'll do that and i don't have a sharpie but i would i'll do that but i don't have a sharpie so i don't understand why he's saying that basically saying I, I can do it but i don't have a sharpie so you basically can't catch up is cool and gives the guy his cash up the guy says damn okay i'll send it now and he takes a screenshot of the confirmed payment 125 dollars to house phone's account now look at the communication nice and you know nice and quick uh, april 25th to april 28th you know back you know back and forth back and forth answering answering now when the next screenshots come up the, the communication all of a sudden breaks down. that's when you know you're getting scammed it should always be a point of knowing get a scam when the communication just completely breaks down next slide <clears throat> come on come on bumba routed yeah next slide hey brother i don't mean to be annoying or pestering you but when do you plan on shipping the denim so okay it's jeans so this is may 18th right may 18th that's nearly two weeks after he's paid if i'm not mistaken right he paid on the 28th all right let's go on my fucking um calendar here <laughs> he, he paid on the 28th right he paid on the 28th and then on may 8th 14th he replies and says hey i don't mean to pester you again being really nice when are you gonna ship my denim he replies back and says this week up and coming i got you so it's gonna be nearly a month and again it, it turns into two months basically may 25th he then says can you please ship phone it's been almost a month since he paid directly through cash up the amount for the denim um he then posts i guess the details of the denim he posts to, re to explain revenge denim house phone double taps a comment and says you know to acknowledge it then he says if you need my name to sign if you can double tap again nothing right then on june 8th so the guy leaves him alone for a long time 
Then he gets back at him again on June 8th. He says, did you ship my denim, bro? And this is when the non... Because again, you can see already, look at the lack of bubbles. You've got one bubble here from House Phone and you've got one, two, three, four bubbles from this kid, five bubbles from this kid and no response still. The next slide is even more depressing. Then it comes, are you going to ship them or not? Yeah, fam, July 17th. Nearly two months, three months after the fact. July 29th, are you going to ship the eye to the denim or can you just send me my bread back? Of course, you're not getting your money and you're probably never going to get your jeans. Or if you do get them, they're not going to be washed. Can you please send me my money back? No reply. Why did you say you wouldn't do this? You thought you weren't going to take months to send it out. Bro, I'm a fan. It's been over three months. There's no excuse for one pair of denim. I'm sorry, fam. You'll have your track in today. August the 22nd. That much of a piece of shit, right? And it continues. Next slide, right? I think this is the last slide. Uh, can you send me my money back? Can you please send my money back? <laughs> Sends him a voice note, probably saying some very rude words. Can you please send me my money back? Looking for the pair of denim I bought of you four months ago, bruh. Talk to the podcast about how. Talk on the podcast about how you steal from your fans. And again, more slides. Is that it? That's it. So to this day, he's got no reply from Houseful. Now in the stream chat. Give me a fucking opinion here. I want to know what the, I'm going to put a fucking poll here because I want to know who do you blame? Who do you blame uh, for, you know, 125 denim gate, right? <laughs> Let's do that. 125 denim gate. Who do you blame? House phone? Uh, the fan? And as per usual, we'll put Axe J here if you don't give a fuck. <laughs> Axe J, right? I want to know who you blame it because I, per I personally think I put 70% blame on House Phone, but I put 30% also on the kid. I'm sorry. House Phone's got a fucking track history of doing this with these fans. If you get in business with him and you want to buy a pair of jeans, you have to know you're going to get fucked over. You're going to send him money. He's not going to send the stuff. You can't have yourself to blame. But I want to know what you guys think in the stream chat. Who, who do you put in terms of blame here? Because I think some people are militant and say you, you're always going to blame the seller, but I have to blame House Phone in this regard. Who do you blame? Um, and my House Phone is busy doing cat and DJing. Exactly, exactly as I said. <laughs> Buying ish off of the dark web sometimes goes like this. Exactly. Hey, Charles Lucas, you know. You know. Um, that's why we use Telegram. Hey. Uh, <laughs> House Phone Coilers, uh, was it? As he says, I bought Blasi's site recently. Only took about a week to ship. Yep, exactly. Um, you're just nine percent house phone, ten percent fan. You know, hitting the XJ. If you say, if you saw others getting scammed and still went for this, it's on you. Exactly, Z. Um, one twenty-five dollars and can't acquire a sharpie. Exactly, Koila. What people are saying here? I can't look at those legs. Um, the bait club will probably move to Austin. Yeah, we'll probably put that later. So, what did you learn about Papa today? Flacco fires inspire me. Yeah, I want to hear what he says. Let's see this. Let's see the poll. I blame Adam 22. Don't know why, but I'll find a reason why exactly. BVD Oxar says, I blame the fan because even as a normie watching a bit of No Jumper and the other and their content, you can tell these people are not upstanding citizens. Exactly. And to be fair, also, let's also be honest and call a spade a spade. House phones are druggy. House phones are party boy. And I think, in my personal opinion, a good sign of somebody because I'm I'm a party boy in my own way, but I'm also not a... What's that thing called? Um, what's that thing called? Um, I also don't beg. I'm not like a asker of things. I don't ask people to like, you know, come with me to places. I don't, I don't you know what I mean? I just don't ask people. I don't ask people to borrow money. I'm just not that guy. But I think some people who are party people, a good sign to, to like notice somebody that parties and does too much drugs is usually their tendency to ask you for money. Hey, can you lend me 10? Can you let me hold 20? Can you let me hold 30? Because usually they want to go pick up. They want to make up the difference of what they have in their pocket. Personally, for me, I like to party and I like to go out. But if I don't have money, I just stay at home. I've always been at it since I was a kid. Since I was a child, I'd never like to go out to go out and party and stuff or go to wherever it may be and depend on my friend to pay my way and i have friends like that i had friends who would go out and like would be basically holding their friends pockets you know whenever their friend went to go buy a drink could you get me one too when they go to get your food can i get something to, can i can i get something as well can you get me a chip like i'm not that guy if i can't go and pay for my uber back 
pay for a couple of drinks, pay for some other adult materials. I'm not going. I'll just stay at home. It's not that. It's not worth it. But I think this guy obviously doesn't mind asking people. And I think one of the main points you can tell he's desperate for money is number one, he went and did that Adam Twenty Two fucking. Sh he went and did that on some shit show and DJ there, even though Adam Twenty Two disrespected him in all sorts of crazy ways. Cool, whatever. And then also this sort of stuff when he starts advertising stuff he's selling on Instagram, you can tell he needs some money. You know, it's like a telltale sign. In my opinion, anyway. Um, what people are saying in the chat? Let's see the the poll. What so far are you saying here? The poll people. Are, oh, yes, it's even actually. It's even. Thirty five percent on house phone, thirty one percent on the fan, and thirty five percent of you don't give a fuck. <laughs> so I love that. I love that. But yeah, I I saw that and I thought that was pretty heinous. But again, I think as most of us have said on here, I think as a fan, if you know these guys through their podcast uh, you don't know them personally clearly but from what we've seen on them on their podcast you can kind of judge their character a bit i personally think house phone is the last person i'm sending any money to to ship anything the only way i'll do it is if he did, like imagine they're doing like a meet and greet somewhere or he was doing a pop-up for his brand i'd maybe message him and say hey i want to buy a pair of jeans from you can i can you bring them to the shop when you do your pop-up and then buy them off him there but i'm pretty sure he would probably forget to bring them even though you're going to bring him cash I'd guarantee you Housefront would be the type of person who forget to bring the denim to a pop-up event that he's doing. He's just one of those type of guys. He's not reliable. Um, he's super flaky. He's all over the place. He's clean addict. He's got all sorts of issues going on. So I think if you're a fan out there and you're sending him money in hope of getting denim that you actually want to wear and shit that you think is going to look cool on you, you're the fucking idiot. You're the mark in that regard. You have to kind of know where to kind of spend your money and know where to go. But again, what do I know? You know? um yes it high roller shoes are, oh yeah the high roller shoes i don't mind them but i think this is something weird to say i think house phone has tainted them for me i think house phone is such a bad business no it's such a like a bad person business wise to deal with these fans with these kind of screenshots you get it kind of makes me not want to do business with him because i feel like a lot of that kind of stuff like you know, Omi and the Hellcat is a good example, right? He's got his own shoes that are fucking ghastly. But I feel like a lot of that scene of those kind of micro brands, it kind of depends a lot on you liking the people because a lot of these shits are kind of terrible. It's like somebody taking a dunk and replacing the dunk, the swoosh with a fucking, with a pitch of dice or like with a triangle or something. It's horrendous. But if you like the person, you're going to back them because you like them and you're a fan of them. So I feel like if you then become unlikable or do some shitty things against your fans i can't then support you because i think the shoes are already shit but i'm only supporting them because i like you and if i can't like you i can't then support the shoes and then on the side of it i'm also very black and white when it comes to like sales like i was a kind of ebay seller who would like ship the stuff the same day have it packaged amazingly do it with tracking and shit i don't play with that sort of stuff if you if you're willing to sell something and you want to receive money from somebody then you have to be also willing to to post it i don't care about your job i don't care about if your mum is sick i don't care if your dog just died i don't give a fuck if i paid the money for my shoes or for my denim send the shit send the thing i don't give a fuck send it i don't care if you're having trouble in your personal life, take down your fucking store, take down your listings and only put them back up again when your personal life is okay. I think people who play people's money are the scum of the earth when it comes to that sort of stuff. It's a bit extreme to say this, but I think if you play people's money and you're selling a T, I don't care if it's $5, if it's $5,000. If you sell something, you take someone's money, you have to give them the fucking stuff. You have to. It's obligation. It's the fucking deal you got involved in. And if you don't do it, you're a piece of shit. So I don't have any qualms with that. I've seen too much bad business from him and with that i would just never buy a high rollers just because of that personally but you know i could be wrong i could be wrong